Hello, everybody, and welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of the podcast here where we believe most high net worth individuals and those who help them, they struggle with clarifying their capital gains tax solutions options. Also, uh, finding ways to create and, and preserve more wealth. Uh, each and every episode, we're bringing on some of the best real estate, financial wealth, and business minds in the world where they share their ideas and deal stories um, so we can help scale our businesses, uh, make more passive income, have creative tax flow solutions, and overall just give you, give you an edge in business and in wealth and in growth. I'm excited about our next guest. He's out of the great state of Florida, um, and he's on a mission to help us, uh, you know, invest and make the most of mobile home park investing. Uh, and maybe 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 you're seeking a stress fee investment that can provide protection from a market crash, you know, something that's against the stock market. Well, this uh, this next guest started in real estate after ending his professional baseball career in 2015, and then he joined a publicly traded real estate investment firm that transacted over $46 billion annually. And then he acquired assets and disposed of commercial properties in the multifamily apartment sector for, for investors spread throughout their various U.S. markets. And then he started a full-time commercial real estate brokerage in 2019, specialized in multifamily property in the Southeast before partnering up with his partner at MHCI Group, uh, which is a mobile home park investing, uh, 16 parks now, multiple states. Please welcome to the show with me, Jason uh, Possum. Jason, how are we doing? Hey, Brett. Thanks for having me on. Really appreciate it. Absolutely. If our listeners get to know you for the first time, could you give us a little bit more about your story and your current focus? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, again, Jason Postel, uh, co-founder of MHCI Group. Uh, we're based out of Florida. Um, you know, a little bit just about my background. Uh, thank you for the intro. But, uh, you know, I didn't have a real estate background background. So out of college, uh, you know, I was uh, fortunate to play, continue playing baseball professionally uh, for about five years. And uh, but I always gravitated towards commercial real estate didn't have family in the business or really friends but uh, i i heard a big leaguer my last season at a pro camp uh, i played with the tigers and i remember him saying he did not make his millions playing baseball he he made it owning thousand units in uh, south detroit right apartment building so it's like oh bingo that was where i started trying to learn more about apartments and uh definitely didn't just jump in start investing i i got in on the brokerage side and uh, work with some larger outfits and, and really learn the space. And, and uh, by about 2018, uh, I was or about 2017, I ended up going independent and I, I didn't have a 401k or really my investment. I, I, was, I was just brokering, right? So I, I said, well, uh, it's time for me to you know, find all these deals for everybody else. Let me start to get on the other side of that. So started really just analyzing the different asset classes and so many food groups, right? You got retail, industrial, different subsets of even multifamily, right? And and just really analyzing, seeing you know, market cyclical, right? Up, down, what what's one of the top performing or the top performing assets? And you know, mobile home communities kept popping up and, and I didn't know anything about them. Uh, kept hearing different things, right? Like, oh, you just own the dirt and collect the dirt and come to realize for the listeners that that is not, uh, not the case. But uh, we'll dive into a little bit, I'm, I'm sure, later. But um, yeah, started started really seeing that mobile home communities was uh, one of the top performing asset classes across the board and, and just seeing the the demand for affordable housing and, and the lack of supply. Right? We always hear about it. We always hear uh, you know, affordable housing crisis, but yet they're they're tearing more of these communities down than they're developing them, right? And, right. and some, some could argue and, and say, oh, they're, they're putting up a, a new park down the road, but it's not, right? It's a resort st style, maybe RV park. So in about 2020, I did close with my business partner. I think he's going to be on your show as well. Um, he's operations on the ground. And um, we met <laughs> through a funny story, but uh, we closed our first deal in, in Arkansas, Little Rock, Arkansas. And uh, it was a 68 unit, uh, two park portfolio. And, and from then on, we, we scaled. Uh, to just under 700 units throughout nice. the state of Arkansas on 16 communities. Got it. Awesome, Jason. Absolutely cool. Cool background. Cool story. Baseball to broker to mobile home park uh, syndication and general partner. Really cool. Uh, Jason Postel, everybody. MHCIGroup.com. MHCIGroup.com. So let's dive right into the topic at hand, which is which is this, Jason. Um, what's the number one secret to why mobile home parks are still the best investment? Yeah. So just to, just to go back to kind of what I was saying, analyzing, I mean, there's arguably different asset classes, right? We've looked into storage and, and different, uh, but I would say, you know, we're behind food, water and shelter. Right. And, and I know apartments have always been the sweetheart and, um, you know, financing is tough, but, you know, again, having 
uh, lot rent, ours is averaging $350 lot rent. So you go through hard times, you can pretty much put that on a credit card, right? It, it's tough to put that on a, a $2,000 for a one bedroom sometimes for people tough times to, to put that on a, a credit card or, or make that payment. So um, just again, studying and, and seeing the, the collections and and once and it's a it's the lowest form of detached um, single family housing, right? That that you can you can still own and and buy. Um, so that you know, just again studying and, and just seeing the demand um, and our our uh, tenants, our, our prospects, they're they're you know we have a, a line out the door. So we're we're just trying to keep up with filling units and and keeping up with the demand. Okay, yeah. So it sounds like plenty of demand and then not a lot of affordable housing, right? We know that it's the one of the top, you know, three, if not top, uh, you know, five crises in America, right? Um, and it's not slowing down. It's only getting worse and it's really difficult. And so the $350 versus the 2000 rent makes a lot of sense. What's the number two secret to why mobile home parks are still the best investment? So, yeah, the the owning the dirt. I did hear that coming in, uh, which I'll touch on now uh, for the question, but it is it is not as simple as owning the dirt, right? It, it, our model is we sell the homes off. So we have tenant owned homes. It's over about 85% of our portfolio. The tenants own the home. So the expenses, when you eliminate owning the homes, uh, you're, you're eliminating that expense ratio, right? So instead of a 50, 55, 60% expenses, you're, you're trimming those up. We have some parks operating at a 24%. Usually when I saw that, see that from a broker or when I underwrote as that, that can't be possible, right? And yes, we have some that are towards a 40, 42%, but the expenses are light. And if you eliminate that, that expense by the tenant owned home model, then, you know, in our opinion, that, that makes it again one of the, the better investments. For sure. Okay. So it sounds like the other two secrets is you can actually decrease your expense ratio, right? And when you do that by selling the homes off, you can lower that, which is a, a which is nice versus other assets where you can't do that. I think that's what you're saying there. What's the number three secret to why mobile home parks are still the best investment? So mom and pops, you know, we're, we're now growing to, like I said, under uh, 700 sites. We have just under 300 under contract right now. So we will be crossing the thousand mark, but it, it there's, there's, n there hasn't been a lot of institutional ownership in what we've bought. So, so the barrier to entry, you know, now it's, it's getting more hyper competitive, obviously, but you know, where we capitalized on the opportunities was those small to mid size. So we've had 18 units, 33, our largest asset to date was 122 units, but no institutions are looking at those. And so, uh, you know, we, we were able to find the, the small to mid size and, and really just direct to owner. And we, we've leveraged some broker context for sure, but, um, you know, the competition in, in that, that mid, that, that's what, uh, you know, made for us uh, to find the better deals. Um, okay, uh, cool. That makes sense. Yeah, mom and pops, and it's not has been over um, concentrated with with big institutional buyers. So let's walk through a couple of deals. Um, a, maybe we can do like the last one you bought or last two you bought, and just kind of get a feel for what those numbers are. Is that all right? If I ask you a couple of questions, we kind of underwrite it together. Absolutely. Sure. All right. Can you tell me? Uh, yeah, I guess would be the first thing would be. Um, how many units, right? Or how many lots or however you want to put it. Right. And then what was the price? What was the average, average, you know, um, uh, rent for that, that piece, that, uh, that unit. Yeah. So, so one of our, our better last deals, it was 122 sites total. That was the, the largest one I was talking about it was one on one clean parcel. Um, average lot rent there was, hundred and at the time it was $150 for some of those. So even though I mentioned a three fifties, our average, this was in a, a little bit different market. So we went up to two fifty. Um, but all the tenants own their homes. Uh, we bought it for $2 million where, uh, for 122 sites, it was a great deal. It was in a trust. Um, it was, it was starting to go downhill. There was a lot of delinquency, but, um, you know, market is still at 300. We, we will get there next year but we're at um at two, 250 right now but it was 100 percent full with home so it wasn't a big project which most of our our communities have been projects where we're having to bring in homes but this this was a more stable asset in the sense of homes were already filled okay so i got that so it was it's 122 was averaging about 150 dollars in lot rent what was the total occupancy at the time of closing 
So the the occupancy was was a hundred percent at closing. It just had thirty percent of delinquent payers that hadn't paid for some of them six months or more. But it, it was a hundred percent with with homes that were on pads full of tenants. Got it. So seventy percent collections, right? So you right. Should, got it. So basically, yeah, it, it's even worse if they're just you have a new evictor, get them out of there. I wonder if you have some stories with that. You know, that'd be kind of cool. But let me keep going on these numbers before we before we dive yeah. into that. So so I'm going to take I'm going to take a 122, right? And I'm going to times that by 150. And that's going to give me about uh, 18,000 a month, although I'm going to take off 30% of that. So that's like 12,000 a month, right? Because you got to work through that. I'm going to times that by 12 right now. It's 153,000 divided by, um, now you said eh, the expense ratio was that, you know, because it's not owner owned, it's tenant owned. Was this a 24% expense ratio or you feel like this one, what do you think this one was? This was a standout. That's twenty four percent. So it's it's direct bill, the utilities, it's clean. So it is. It is the only asset that's in that twenty, and that's the twenty four percent. Correct. Okay, and that includes uh, for you guys. Uh, just to clarify, property insurance, property taxes, right? Any utilities that you're paying, and includes uh, repairs and maintenance, management fees. Like I mean, this is everything. You're saying it's only twenty four percent. That's right. Yeah, general. Yeah, it it. We were coming through the PLs. Yeah. I mean, you got general liability insurance. Uh, yeah. The taxes we pay manager there, 12, 1200 bucks uh, a month and, okay. and uh, three, you know, 350 for, for some landscaping. It's, it's pretty lean and mean. Okay. So I'm looking at like a six cap on that, on that 30% ratio, you know, of the, going, it was a six, right. But then I, now let's talk about, well, it's not just a six because you're going to start getting these units that are not paying either to pay or to get out. So walk us through how long did that take, and and then what is the average rents now? Now that you've had a chance to get that out, and what's the average occupancy now? Or average collections would be a better way to say. Yes. Yeah, so we've we've only had so what worked really well for that. We actually were raising money for legal. We said okay, thirty percent. That's a big number on on one hundred twenty two units. So we're going to, and we've done evictions. So we had a, a pretty good idea of what that would cost, but we went in and and told everybody, Hey, we're going to wipe the slate clean. Okay. So if you owe thousand, two, th whatever it is, we're, we're wiping the slate clean. But if you don't pay by the first, uh, the fifth, that's, you know, first through the fifth is when payments, then we're going to initiate the, the eviction. We're going to start the eviction process. And believe it or not, we had 98% collected after that. And it was, and that hasn't happened before either. So again, this is a standout shining star, but it, um, we had 98% collections, we ended up only having to evict one person that was wasn't even on a non-payment it was it was other violations but um uh but yeah it, it worked out really well the, the okay pause there, pause there pause there okay so that sounds really cool right so you go to him you're like look the past is the past we forgive that or it's not even with us like it's that guy's gone but moving forward you've got to pay on time we're going to evict you um but we'll wipe that out okay got that was it at 150 or 250 what was the number Yo, so we did it. We did it with. They saw we were coming in, did some improvements, right? There was some, some. Uh, we put a little bit of paving down in, in some rougher areas. Did, did landscaping, new signs, uh, brought up kind of just the general aesthetic. So they realized, okay, we're we're not just coming in the raise of rents, but we they they realized that if we were willing to wipe the slate clean and and then do improvements, that we were coming in as new ownership, new management team, and and making the community better, right? And if there was any bad apples in there they were going to get evicted anyway and the tenants appreciate it but um but yeah they they uh they we sent out the letter day one and and uh yeah by the, by the next month they we did tell them there was going to be improvements in the community and give them a heads up on the increase and okay. everybody what was the amount what was the amount i'm sorry what was the amount like what what was the increase what was the total that they're paying oh 245 245 so Got it. And how about the other 150 are the other 150 paying 245 yeah, it went to 245. Okay, That's everyone's right. at 245. And at this point, you're 98% collections on 245. Is that a fair summary? Correct. That's right. Okay, so now let's do the math, right? So we're going to take 122 by 245. This is the this is the cool point. Now, yeah. And we're going to take, uh, what was it called? For point, 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 point 0.95, just in mm -hmm. case there. So 28,000 times 12 is 340. Now we're at 340,000. Now we're going to take that expense ratio, 75%, basically 25%. So we're at 255. Divide that by 2 million. We're at a thirteen percent cap rate. Not too bad, Jason. Now, how much did you put into the property for the improvements? So we had forty thousand. We had some lift stations, so we had a hundred about a hundred thousand total 
that was, uh, it was like 75, yeah, lift stations. We had to repair two lift stations, even though it was on uh, city water, city sewer. Um, then we did some paper. Yeah, it was, it was just under a hundred thousand. Okay. Yeah. So it's just called 2.1. You're all in, right? And you're taking the 255, which is the approximate NOI here by 2.1. That's a 12 cap. Like, Hey, that's pretty sweet. When did you buy it? So we bought it. Uh, it'll be two, two years this, this year. And, and the, the beautiful thing on that deal, the 13% cap, right? I mean, we, we love cap, right? Paying attention to it, but the cash on cash is what was crazy. I mean, we're in the 22 percent plus because of the way we structured the deal the seller actually held i didn't mention that at the beginning it was two million but the seller held a second for five hundred thousand for some favorable terms uh and we only had total all in five hundred thousand on total in the deal five hundred thousand cash um in the deal so we're we're now distributing we were doing ten thousand a month now now some months we did 20 but just in that first year we were doing ten thousand a month so on the 120 net cash. Uh, okay. Let's try. I'm going to, I'm going to test you on this 20%. You ready? Cause I, 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 uh, this is what we do every single day. You ready, Jason? So let's see if you got it. And, I th and I'm, I'm going to trust that you got there. Right. Well, let's just see though. Okay. So sure. on that $500,000 seller carry back, what was the interest rate? So for, uh, it was a 4% IO. Okay. 4% IO. Mm -hmm. Okay. So 4% IO. Nice. I like that IO for how long? It was seven years, seven years. Excellent. And so, and it's just fixed at 4%. That's right. Yeah, nice, nice job there. And then on the, well, how about on the other, the one point six million of debt? So we had that was we put five hundred down. So I guess it would be. So now you're at. Um, that was, yeah, that was right when rates were jumping. I'll I'll clear this up. It was around four. Uh, it was in the five. It was right at like a five and a quarter, three, uh, four, seven, five, and we had some interest only. In oh, okay. Point. Nice. So yeah, so you got four, you got four point seven five on the mm -hmm. other, on the other. Let's just call it because uh, you got a million between these two, so then you just have about another five hundred thousand dollars there. So good. Okay. So four point seven five, and so I'm gonna take five hundred thousand by four point seven five. That's about twenty three thousand of debt service per year, right? Is it principal and interest, or is it just interest only on that one? Interest only for it was the six months. P and I on a 25 year AM. Okay. I don't know what your debt service is on that, but let's just call it 30 K on average per year. Let's just say on that one. And then on the other one, it's, it's IO for seven years. The seller carry on the five. Oh my gosh. You guys, I mean, that's, that's incredible, especially with where interest rates are at now. Right. So, I mean, so that's, that's like 20 K a year there. Okay. So 20,000. So you guys are magicians to get that one. So that's 20 K. So, okay. So I'm looking at about $50,000 of debt service. Is that about what you have there on your, your total per year? We're paying more than that. So I, I would say it's, um, you said you penciled out 50. I would say, I would shoot more as 80, 80,000. Call it okay. 80. I've had that a little more. Yeah. That's fine. That's 80, right? And so then we're going to take $80,000 as the debt service, right? And we're going to put that here. And then we're going to, by here, I mean, my HP 12C is what I'm using. By the way, I'm a commercial oh, real estate. You're going to be on. Yeah. You sharp. Yeah. 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 Sorry to Marcus and Mel Cap. And so we're just, we're underwriting this live. If anyone wants to get, you should get this calculation. It's pretty cool to, to do this. And so remember, our NOI was about $255,000, right? Is what we calculated it to be. So 255 is the estimated NOI. And so we're going to take that. And we're going to minus the 80,000 of debt service. So that gives us about 175,000. Then we're gonna take that, divide it by the $500,000 down payment. Plus they added, is that $100,000, is that out of pocket as well, um, Jason? Or is that, was that a part of the debt? Oh, the yeah, the seventy the seventy thousand was, yeah. was out of pocket. Yeah, we didn't get a construction loan, so I added. Yeah, because I think if you, so would, I'll uh, add, I'm going to add a hundred thousand to that down payment, right? In a sense, right? Because that's essentially what it was. So now we take one seventy five divided by six hundred. I'm seeing twenty nine percent. If those are the numbers, even even at eighty k of debt service, so it's even better than twenty. Yeah, twenty two and a half is is what we penciled out, and um, mm -hmm. yeah, you're, I mean, again, we're we're now distributing a little more, but. It's, yeah, I'm not going to get on here and say, oh, we're crunch crunching 30%, even though, yeah, some months it could definitely hey. do it. Yeah, I hear you. It could fluctuate there. By the way, this is Jason uh, Postel. If he's doing deals like this, you're going to want to know him. You want to go to mhcigroup.com, mhcigroup.com to learn more about why the mobile home parks are the best investment and ways to invest. Um, so, uh, Jason, what uh, any live deals you have now that you're that you're raising for, you're looking at, or like what, what are you seeing out there with, as far as opportunities? 
Yeah, it's it's uh it, it was challenging. You know, last year we, we did push the deal across the finish line, but you know, we we had such a good outbound campaign for the last four years, just hammering in a concentrated market where we we've had now sellers come to us, they see that the offers aren't maybe as strong and and I don't want to say they were getting greedy, but uh, I think they were getting greedy the last uh you know 2020, 20, 21. But uh yeah, right now we have 281 units under contract across two parks. So that's uh, two mobile home communities in in arkansas again and where we we own and operate and uh we're we're getting in into those at around seven million it's a larger asset so you know we are um you know paying for for scale here but it's it's still a great deal uh you know one deals 195 sites for 5.1 million which uh you know in the market we've we've seen trade you know 230 units for 13 million so we, yep. we feel we've got some building equity yeah day one and, and it's gonna I be love it. another home run for sure That's awesome, jason i love it i love mobile home parks multi-family mobile home parks um parking lots those are cool um i like some industrial right okay. uh, i like rv resort those are probably my five of the favorite food groups um, um when it comes to investment real estate and uh, especially when you have the value add where you can go from 175 150 to about you know let's call it 300 right or 250 like that's fantastic and then if you if you can if you, then it's all about terms you know with the debt right and the interest right. like man you got tax flow you got cash flow going you got debt flow going well you're getting all three of these connecting in a sweet deal then you're, it's a home run so way to go on that jason uh paul still everybody um p-o-s-t-i-l-l-m-h-c-i group.com i want to geek out a little bit about capital gains tax jason you know um you know most most people uh think that the 1031 exchange is the only way to go and they get caught in these what's called the shotgun wedding they're racing around with their hair on fire you know they're trying to buy that deal the brokers are excited because they know they got that deal lined up they're going to get it but the seller's like, man, I got to go overpay. And then either I overpay and get too much debt and too much not enough liquidity diversification, or I'm selling a business or cryptocurrency and I don't even have a 1031 option because it's not eligible. But the worst part is like a commercial real estate syndicator like yourself, you know, you want people to be able to come into your deals, but they can't unless you do like some like tenant in common carve out, which is kind of a needle in a haystack sometimes. Enter the deferred sales trust. It's a solution to defer capital gains taxes without having to force a 1031 exchange. So I'm curious, Jason, with your background, everything we just talked about, what would it mean if people could exit like, you know, $100 million of Bitcoin, defer all the tax and go into a deals with you or, or another property or real estate, all tax deferred, no timing restrictions, no like kind placement requirement, reg D, passive deals or syndications, all of that. What would that mean for, for you and the industry? Yeah, it's a beautiful, and I, I don't know much. That's why I would love hearing, hearing you share about it because we we have had a lot of investors, and, and yeah, the ten thirty one, like you said, the J tick, that's unique. And for our, uh, not saying we can't pivot on a deal by deal basis, but you know, for this fund we're raising right now, these two deals, it, it isn't set up uh, to accept those. So um, we are having, unfortunately, having some investors sit sit out on on uh, the sidelines on some of these deals because uh, you know a vehicle like that isn't in place. Uh, today, you know, in our in our um, in our pipeline. So yeah, it, it uh, definitely definitely helps, and and we're uh, we're trying to talk through and and learn some new ways to to help our investors. Cool. If you want to learn more about that, you go to capitalgainstaxsolutions.com. That's capitalgainstaxsolutions.com. We also wrote a book on it called Building a Capital Gains Tax Exit Plan. It's my journey from Marcus Miller to as a broker to help people uh, not only do 1031s, but then to do a deferred sales trust. Now they feel trapped by capital gains tax ever again, but also works for cryptocurrency, business sales, uh, works for primary homes. And it can also save a failed 1031 exchange in case you want to go for your 1031 exchange. In fact, we just released the best 1031 exit plan. Go to experttaxsecrets.com to learn about, more about that. You mm -hmm. never want to get caught in a 1031 without a deferred sales trust as a backup plan. And sometimes you want to do both. And we're here to help you here at Capital Gains Tax Solutions. Execute on that. Pick up the book. Go to CapitalGainsTaxSolutions.com uh, or ExpertTaxSecrets.com to learn more. That being said, Mr. Jason, are you ready for the lightning round? Let's do it. All right. Knowing what you know now, if you could go back to your 25-year-old self, what's the one golden nugget to make sure you tell yourself to do? Hey, get started. Get around people doing it. And don't be afraid to ask Tough questions. Excellent. Uh, number one book you've recommended or gifted the most in the past year? Uh, the One Thing, Gary Keller. I love that book. It's such a good book. I got to read it again. Oh, uh, next question. What are you most curious about? Uh, you know, what, what's, what's next? How can I get better? You know, what, uh, what's changing? How can I get ahead? 
Love it. Uh, number one leadership book or theme that you strive to live by? Leadership, uh, you know, lead by example. You know, uh, are these short answers? I don't want to get too long winded because I, you know, the, the lead by example. I, you know, again, sports background, having coaches bark at you if they weren't able to do it. I always respected that. So, you know, in, in the business world, it's the same. If I can't get on the phone cold call in front of you, or someone hangs up on you, and I don't pick up, call them back and show you how it's done, then you know, follow, you know, lead by example. Absolutely love that. Um, second to last question, number one way that you're using chat GPT. I'm sorry, number one way to use? That chat you're GPT? using it. it. Yeah, that you're using it. Uh, um, yeah, I'm still trying to learn it. I, I know it, it does clean up some some articles and some posts. So, um, you know, maybe uh, giving me the cliff notes on some some articles has been pretty good. Uh, uh, last question. After your, all your success, helping all the people you've helped um, achieve all you've achieved, how do you best stay centered in your values, Jason, and then stay encouraged to charge forward to reach even higher heights? I always put God first, you know, God fear a man. So, you know, give the church, always give, give glory to God. That's, uh, you know, first and foremost. Everything amen. Else Amen and amen. Jason, I want to thank you for being on the show, sharing uh, your uh, sharing your wisdom on mobile home parks, uh, your success, underwriting in a live deal with me, you know, on the fly. It was awesome. And finding great and a great deal, right? I would encourage you to keep using, using your gifts of hard work, you know, modeling what works and leading by example and uh, and then finding great deals for people to investigate some passive freedom in their wealth plan through mobile home park investing. For our listeners who want to get in touch with you, would you mind one last time, what's the best place for them to find you? Always on the email, you know, Jason at mhcigroup.com or or the website mhcigroup.com. Always on. awesome. Thanks, Jason. Hey, I want to thank everyone else too for listening to the episode. Uh, multiple podcasts are streaming on Capital Gains Tax Solutions, Build It to Billions podcast, and Expert CRE Secrets podcast. As always, we believe uh, most high net worth individuals and those who help them they struggle with clarifying sometimes their capital gains tax deferral options or finding amazing deals with operators like Jason that have a track record. Um, and or, um, you know, working through ways to structure and underwrite deals. And so we want to bring you actionable knowledge today that you can use um, to help you create and preserve more wealth, make an impact. Um, and uh, we also encourage you to give as much as you can away for those that are most vulnerable in this world. We so appreciate everyone watching today. Please rate, review, subscribe, share it with somebody. And we will talk to you again, you again sometime.